And so transcription is a process that only produces a copy of one strand of the double-stranded DNA, and that's going to be called the template strand. And during initiation of transcription, several enzymes are involved in the unwinding of the double-stranded DNA. And the purpose of that is primarily to prevent the formation of supercoils. So it also allows as well for transcriptional machinery to have uninterrupted, uninterrupted access to the DNA and that gene of interest. So it's just gonna make it a little bit easier to access. And transcription results in a single strand of mRNA, which is synthesized from the template strand, which is also known as the antisense strand sometimes. Um, and that mRNA is going to be both anti-parallel and complementary to the template strand. So it, it's important to note here as well that the names of transcription and translation are sort of appropriately like named, named appropriately. Um, because if you think about when you transcribe something, when you're transcribing something, like if you're transcribing a lecture, um, you're taking it from an audio recording and you're turning it into something written, it's gonna be in the same language. So in the cell as well, when transcription occurs, you're not changing the language, you're sort of just like writing it down in a different way. But when you think about translating something, it's usually turning it from one language to a different language. And that kind of is what happens in the cell as well. So when translation occurs, it's, it's, it's really turning it from one language to another language. And so it's kind of appropriately named for those two steps. And so um, in eukaryotes specifically, there are three different types of RNA polymerases. Only one of these RNA polymerases, however, is going to be involved in the transcription of mRNA. And that's going to be RNA polymerase 2. So just the first one here, RNA polymerase 1. This is going to be located in the nucleus, and it's going to have the job of synthesizing rRNA. RNA polymerase 2, which is also located in the nucleus, is going to be synthesizing hnRNA, which is what we talked about before. That's the pre-processed mRNA form. And it's also going to produce some snRNA. And snRNA stands for small nuclear RNA. And RNA polymerase 2, like we said, that's the that's the one that's going to be involved in transcription of mRNA in eukaryotes. And finally, this third type is RNA polymerase 3. RNA polymerase 3 is located in the nucleus as well, and it's in, it's in charge of synthesizing tRNA and also some rRNA. And just a little bit of an overview about RNA. Um, RNA is synthesized by DNA dependent RNA polymerase, but we just refer to it kind of as RNA polymerase usually. Um, RNA polymerase's job in general is to kind of search for those for specialized regions with, with on, within the DNA. Those regions are going to be called promoter regions. Um, and the reason it's looking for those specific promoter regions is because RNA polymerase is then going to sort of go there and that's going to be where transcription is going to start. So it, it needs to initiate transcription at that specific region. Um, so in eukaryotes, for example, RNA polymerase 2 is going to be the one that's the main player sort of in transcribing mRNA. And RNA polymerase 2 is then going to bind to that site on the promoter region, which is usually called the TATA box or TATA -TA box. And that's named for its high concentration of thymine and adenine bases. So that's why it has the TATA abbreviation. Transcription factors are also going to help the RNA polymerase find that TATA box or promoter region. Uh, it's also important to note that unlike DNA polymerase 3 in the process of DNA replication, RNA polymerase doesn't need a primer to start. So it can sort of independently attach there and then begin the transcription process. So this is just a general diagram of what transcription should look like in a eukaryote. And so when RNA polymerase 2 begins synthesizing the mRNA strand, so as we see over here, um, 
it's going to travel along what's called the template strand, which is the one down here at the bottom. And RNA polymerase is going to go along the template strand from the three prime to five prime direction. And so the reason it's going along the template strand in the three prime to five prime direction is because as we can see here, it's going to be synthesizing that mRNA strand at the same time. Um, and this is going to allow for the construction of an mRNA strand that's going to be in a five prime to three prime direction. So as RNA polymerase is moving this way, um, it's going to be building that mRNA strand starting from this beginning over here, the five prime end, and it's going to be adding components on. So, so if you can picture where they would be added, they would be added this way and then this way as it begins moving down. And then that, the whole strand would just be released from the complex as, it, as it's adding those building blocks on here. <clears throat> um, it's also important to note that unlike DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase isn't going to proofread its work. So when this synthesized mRNA transcript is produced, um, it's not going to be edited because it doesn't have the cellular machinery to edit it, uh, which like DNA polymerase would. So there could be errors on here that are, or regions that are, that are not corrected uh, at this time. And then like the post transcript translational machinery would then go in and fix it. And the coding strand is going to be identical to the mRNA strand except all of the thymine nucleotides that are in the DNA strand are going to appear as uracil nucleotides in the mRNA. So both of those are going to, the, the coding strand and the mRNA strand are, are going to be identical, except for those, that one difference, which is the thymines will be replaced by uracil nucleotides. And it's also important to note that the synthesis of RNA or DNA is always going to occur in the five prime to three prime direction. And so transcription will continue along the DNA coding region until the RNA polymerase sort of reaches a termination sequence or a stop signal. So once it hits that, the DNA double helix is then able to reform and the transcription product formed is going to be what we refer to as a heterogeneous nuclear RNA or HNRNA. So this is just a little overview of the post-transcriptional processing that occurs. So before the hRNA, HNRNA is able to leave the nucleus, it has to undergo three specific processes that sort of allow it to interact with the ribosome and then subsequently like survive in the cytoplasm. Um, and these three modifications or processes are what are referred to as intron and exon splicing, addition of the five prime cap, and then addition of the three prime poly A tail. So the first one is going to be that uh, intron and exon splicing that we talked about a little bit before as well. And splicing of the transcript is to remove non coding sequences, which are called introns, and then ligate the coding sequences, which are called exons. And that's important because, like when we talked about before, um, the RNA polymerase doesn't have the ability to edit that mRNA strand that's produced. So you're going to have a lot of regions of um, the mRNA that don't actually encode for anything in the, in the polypeptide strand that results at the end. So you don't want that in a protein, right? You only want, you only want coding regions in a protein. So it's going to take those non-coding sequences, the introns out. And that's going to be done basically by this complex that's called the spliceosome. And so a little bit of like a metaphor, the spliceosome can kind of be thought of like molecular scissors and glue. Um, they're going to cut out those non-coding regions, regions, and then they're going to glue together the exons. So the second process that we're going to talk about also is the adding of the five prime cap at the end of the HNRNA molecule. And so that's going to be done uh, by what's called a 7-methylguanolate triphosphate cap. That's going to be added. And basically the function of that cap at the 5' prime end is just going to be to primarily protect the mRNA from degradation. Uh, but it's also going to be what the ribosome can recognize at the binding site. So it sort of has like two functions, but primarily it's going to keep it from degrading. 
And then the third process as well, kind of similar to the second one, at the three prime end of the mRNA, a polyadenosyl or what's also called a poly A tail is going to be added. And the purpose of that is mainly just to like protect the transcript from degradation. Um, and the poly A tail, we can remember the name because it's composed of many adenine bases. So poly A, many adenine.